Hello, and welcome to lecture 10 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're, what we're going to do is actually look at some applications of linear systems. So we're kind of reaching the end of chapter one, and we've covered all the sections, but we haven't looked at section 1.6, which kind of tells you some of the things that you can do with a linear system. So today's lecture is gonna focus on two applications of system of linear equations. The first example will come from economics, and the second example will come from network flows. Now you don't have to be an expert in these areas. I'll try to explain the needed background that you needed to kind of understand how linear systems come into play. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is a homogeneous system in economics. And what we're gonna be looking at in particular is what's called the input output model. And so here's the kind of the setup. What we're going to do is divide a nation's economy, oh, hypo, there we go, divide a nation's economy into many uh, sections or sectors. So we have the manufacturing sector, we have the communication sector, we have the entertainment sector, and there could be other things like agricultural and so on. And what we wanted to do is assume that for each of these sectors, we know its total output and we know how this output is divided into other sectors. Okay, so here I have an example that we'll use for the first half of the talk. Let's say our three sectors are electricity. So we have Niagara Falls generating all of our electricity. We have some robots here to, uh, in an auto plant denoting manufacturing. And here's a picture of Hamilton denoting the steel industry. So we have these three industries. Now, each of these industries are going to kind of either have their output go to one of the other sectors or it will go to itself. Okay, so let me just kind of draw some things here to kind of keep track of some of this information. So let's say that half of the output of electricity goes to the steel industry and the steel industry sends 20% of its output to electricity. On the other hand, steel may send 20% of its output back to itself. Uh, steel may also send 60% of its manu uh, output to manufacturing, which kind of makes sense. You're taking your steel and making the cars from that. And, but manufacturing also will send back products that the steel industry will use. Manufacturing will then also create things for its own sector. So, so let's say 30% of its output goes back. And let's say electricity sends 40% of its output to manufacturing and manufacturing sends 30% of its output back to electricity and electricity will send 10% of its output back to itself. Okay, so just so that you're kind of clear about what all these numbers mean, what you wanna think of it, if we're looking at all the arrows around here, what we wanna say is 30% of manufacturing goes to electricity, 40% goes to steel, right? That's this 40%. And what did we have? We had 30%, 30% goes to itself. Now, if I've done everything correctly, what you should see is all the arrows that go out of a sector should sum up to one, which makes sense because you want to divide up the output uh, among all the sectors. There shouldn't be any unaccounted for output, right? So for electricity, 50% goes to steel, 40% goes to manufacturing, 10% goes to itself. So that accounts for 100% of the output. So this is our setup. We have various stages of our economy and we're keeping track of how the output is divided among the various sectors. And hopefully the numbers that I've thrown here into this model look realistic, uh, somewhat, somewhat realistic. Okay. So we will need uh, some terminology from economics and the terminology we need is the price. So the total dollar value of the sector's output is called the price of that output. So if we go back here, electricity, what we wanna know is how much the electricity is outputted, okay? And so 
say electricity outputs $10 million worth of goods, that means 10% of that 10 million goes back to electricity, 5% uh, of that output, it goes to, or 50% of that output goes to steel and so on. Okay. And we have the following fact uh, that was first proved by Leontief, hopefully I pronounced his name right, he was a Nobel Prize winner, and he proved that there exists an equilibrium price that can be assigned to the outputs, such that the income of each sector balances its expenses. So it's a little bit long-winded, but what it means is we have a system like this. Steel manufacturing and electricity can figure out a price to pay for a price for their output, such that everybody's expenses is equal to their income. So that is what the equilibrium part here is coming to. Now, this is kind of the setup. And so far, we don't see any linear algebra. So we're going to take a pause here. And when we come back, we're going to explain how the linear algebra will come in in order to find this equilibrium price. And hopefully by analyzing the example on this slide right here, you can see, get a better intuition about what they mean by price, by equilibrium, and a balancing between the sectors. See you in the next part.